Hello and welcome back to another segment of trigonometric functions. And today we're going to be talking about determining the size of the trigonometric functions of an angle in a given quadrant. Now let's notice the graph here with the labels of each of the quadrants here. And we see in quadrant one that basically all the trigonometric functions, all six, are being positive in this particular quadrant. As we go to the second quadrant, of course, sine theta being greater than zero and cosecant theta being greater than zero, meaning that these two trigonometric functions are positive. All the other trigonometric functions are negative. So just sine and cosecant will be deemed as positive angles in the second quadrant. As we continue on, we see in the third quadrant, tangent theta being greater than zero and cotangent theta being greater than zero, which means that these trigonometric functions, their angles will be positive, whereas all the other trigonometric functions will be negative. And as we go to the fourth quadrant, we see that cosine theta is greater than zero and secant theta is greater than zero. So in all the other trigonometric functions are negative. So if we look at the chart here, we'll see that, that if an angle was to actually be in the first quadrant now, the first quadrant, we see that all the trigonometric functions are said to be what? Positive. Now, when we go to the second quadrant, of course, this is what we said over here by the graph, we see that sine and cosecant are positive, but all the rest are being negative. In the third quadrant, we have tangent theta and cotangent uh, theta to be positive, and all the rest of the trigonometric functions to be negative. And also here, we have cosine theta and uh, cosecant theta to be positive in the fourth quadrant, and then all the rest to be actually negative angles. Now, we want to talk about reference angles. But basically, before we do that, I just want to show you something really, really quick here. And we just basically just reiterating our point about positive angles being in these quadrants here. And so if you have an angle, let's say if sine, if this was an angle here in this quadrant, this being the second quadrant, right, we see that if this was a sine or a cosecant angle in the second quadrant here, then these angles will be positive. Now, when we go here, and of course, all the rest of the angles, of course, will be negative. Now, sine and cosecant here, if this was the land in this quadrant here, in the third quadrant, then we see that sine and cosecant will be uh, negative. Also, in the fourth quadrant, sine and cosecant will also be negative. But in this quadrant here, quadrant one, all of the angles, well, sine and cosine included, will be positive as well. So if we come over here to cosine and, and secant, we know that here in this, if this was the land in this quadrant here, if, as we said earlier, all of the trigonometric functions are, are positive. But now, in the other quadrant, this which is the, the second, the third, and of course the fourth quadrant, the fourth quadrant, the cosine and secant will be positive as well. Now, one more, we go to tangent and cotangent. Here we have, of course, if that was the land in here, we, we're saying that all of the angles of the trigonometric functions are positive, but yet we go to the third quadrant, tangent and cotangent angles are positive as well. Now, we mentioned reference angles just a second ago. Now, we're going to talk about reference angles and what are reference angles? What well, reference angles are acute angles form the terminal side of theta and the x axis. Now, Reference angles 
or reference angle chart, let's see, if theta is an angle that lies in the quadrant, and if alpha, which means that is this reference angle, right, then this is what we have here representing that. Sine theta, the angle of sine theta, right, its reference angle will be what? Plus or minus sine alpha. And same with cosine theta, its, rep, uh, its uh, reference angle being plus or minus cosine alpha. And tangent, cosecant, secant, cotangent, the same. Their uh, angles or their reference angles are represented as alpha angles. Now, we will show you some stuff concerning or dealing with this in just a second, but we need to look at, let's look at a few examples here. If we look at this problem, sine 135 degrees, we want to use the reference angle to find the exact value of the trigonometric function, what, okay, here in this case, sine of 135 degrees. Now, notice that 135 degrees is being drawn going what? In the counterclockwise motion and landing in quadrant two. Now, its reference angle is 45, right? So, 45 degrees. Now, if we take the sine of 45 degrees and find its exact value, we have the square root of two over two, the angle of 135 degrees is in the second quadrant, as we mentioned. But where the sine function is positive, we say that the sine of 135 degrees is equal to sine 45 degrees, which is equal to what? Square root of 2 over 2. Now, let's look at this for a moment here. We see that this is sine theta, sine theta being 135 degrees. Now, sine alpha, which can be plus or minus in this case, sine alpha is 45 degrees, but guess what? Sine theta being adjusted is going to be a positive what? A positive angle because those angles that land in the second quadrant that are sine are said to be positive. So this is what we have here. We have the exact value and with the exact value comes the positive sine function because it's in the what? The second quadrant. Let's do another problem. Now, we look at this one here. Cosine 600 degrees. Now, cosine 600 degrees start from here, from the reference line. It goes around, goes around, goes around, goes around, of course. And then wherever you see, of course, we draw the angle out here, for, which is coterminal. And then from the coterminal, from the reference uh, line to the coterminal side of this, of this uh, angle here, we get that the coterminal angle is going to be 60 degrees. Well, it's this ref reference angle as well. So the reference angle for 600 degrees is 60 degrees. And cosine 60 degrees is equal to 1 half. And the angle 600 degrees is in the third quadrant where the cosine function is what? Negative. Therefore, of course, cosine 600 degrees is equal to cosine 60 degrees. And it's equal to here 1 half because now look, we have what? The angle that falls in the third quadrant Okay, the only ones that are basically positive in the third quadrant is tangent and cotangent. So that means that tangent and cotangent angles are positive, but everything else, and including cosine, is negative. So this is why this angle, this cosine function, is negative, because it lands in the third quadrant, and the cosine function that lands in the third quadrant is negative. Let's do another problem. As we look at the reference here, the reference angle to be 17 uh, pi over 6. 
right? And its reference angle, of course, is going to be pi over 6. So the reference angle for 17 pi over 6 is pi over 6. And cosine pi over 6, when you actually evaluate your, the triangle of this thing, we have that the square root of 3 over 2 is its exact value. Now, the angle 17 pi over 6 is in the second quadrant where the cosine function, again, is negative. So we have that, therefore, cosine 17 pi over 6 is equal to what? Negative cosine pi over 6, which is equal to negative square root of 3 over 2. Why? Because if we're talking about this being a cosine, we're talking about this being cosine 17 pi over 6. Landing in this quadrant, those things are only the, the angles that are only trig functions that are only positive are your sine and your cosecant. And in this case, everything else is going to be negative. So cosine landing in angles landing in the second quadrant will be considered as negative. Well, for right now, this concludes our talk about reference angles. And we're going to continue with reference angles in the next segments when we also find its exact values.